though that a quorum of members is present, that the meeting has been duly called, and that the notice of this meeting has been posted in accordance with the Texas Open Meetings Act, Texas Government Code, Chapter 551. It's 601. If you would, please stand with me as Mr. Kidd leads us in our invocation and Ms. Powell leads us in our pledges. If you would, please bow and pray with me. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for loving us. We thank you for your grace. Dear God, we just thank you for all the many blessings that we have and the freedoms that we have in this country. And in this week, Lord, with Memorial Day, help us remember those that have served our country and and those that are still serving our country, Lord, and we just ask for your protection and to be with them, and we thank you so much for them, Lord. We thank you uh, for all of the, the educators and the staff and, and everyone with the district, Lord, and their heart for children. We just uh, ask that you please be with them in this last couple weeks of school. We ask that you be with the children and just circle them with, with love and protection. And just be with us tonight, Lord, and... and uh, uh, be with us and guide us and direct us in the decisions that are made and let it be your will dear father in your name we pray amen, amen. amen. pledge allegiance to the flag of the united states of america and to the republic for which it stands one nation under god indivisible with liberty and justice for all honor the texas flag I pledge allegiance to the Texas, one state, under God, one indivisible. Thank you very much, Mr. Kidd and Ms. Powell. Next order of business is uh, item 2A, Dr. Stockton, uh, special district recognition for students together achieving results star. Great. At this time, I'll ask Sherry Sunderman, our coordinator for guidance and counseling, to come to the podium and introduce our very special guests. Good evening, members of the board, Dr. Stockton. Um, it's time once again to celebrate our graduating star seniors. Uh, this group, uh, led by counselors, who many of them are over here against the wall with the students, and college readiness specialist Veronica Martin, who's thinking in the back, um, have participated in many activities through their four years in high school. Those include ropes course, college and university visits, job career and site visits, and campus meetings and activities. The college visits have included such institutions as University of Houston's Conrad Hilton School of Hotel and Restaurant Management, Navarro College, Prairie View A&M, San Jacinto College, and Texas A&M. The college visits are the kids' favorite activity. Also important in these students' successes are their parents, and we'd like to ask the parents here tonight to please stand. <laughs> Of our 2014 graduating class, get this, 100% have passed the tax. Yeah. <laughs> 50% are first generation students, 96% of the group said that they had gotten to know adults from their campus and the district through this program. All but one said that in eighth grade, they thought they would go to college. When asked how their view of their future has changed, some of the responses were, I'm more positive about my future. Life is better. I now realize the opportunity education offers. Same plans. <laughs> I'm ready to use the tools given to me by my school as I journey into manhood. I wanted to do uh, video games, then be a YouTube star, and now I want to be a YouTube star or a math professor. <laughs> <laughs> I first thought I was simply going to get a job and make money. Then slowly reality started seeping in. I realized I was going to need education if I was going to excel. I never knew I'd be leaving school this fast. I see myself as getting into college and following my interests. I learned if I try, I can do anything I set my mind to and not to let others determine my future. I have become more mature and focused on school. I thought I wanted to be a teacher, but I realized it's much easier to say you want to do something than to actually do it. I now know what I want to do and I'm more positive. I've learned more about myself and what I truly would like to accomplish. My mindset has changed from a person who does okay with getting by 
into a person who craves more than just an average accomplishment. 80% of these students plan to attend a two or four year college, 8% a technical school, 8% the military, and four work full time. Careers of interest include mechanical engineering, DEA or SWAT, nursing, business, culinary, psychiatry, education, cosmetology, hotel restaurant management, radio or television broadcasting. Colleges of interest are Lone Star, Blinn, University of Houston, Texas State, Prairie View A&M, University of Texas at San Antonio, University of Texas at Dallas, Los Angeles City College, San Jacinto College, Stephen F. Austin, and Texas A&M. 42% of the students have applied for financial aid and several have applied for scholarships, including the CISD Education Foundation Scholarship. And we have a winner in our group we'll introduce in a minute. Orchestra Booster uh, Club Scholarship, Star Scholarship, Poetry Scholarship, Fireman Scholarship. We have some students here tonight who would like to share about their experiences in the STAR program. First of all is Daisy Fuentes, uh, Daisy Fuentes. <laughs> I think I've heard that name before, Daisy Cuevas uh, from Caney Creek High School. She is our CSISD Foundation, Education Foundation Scholarship. Daisy. <laughs> Hello, good evening everyone. When I went to the STAR meeting, I wasn't sure what to expect. I always wanted to go to college, but I didn't know much about how to get into it or you know how the steps to apply. Through SAR, I've enjoyed visiting U of H and other campuses. The program also motivated me with guest speakers and activities. I feel more prepared to enter college this fall. I plan on majoring education and become an uh, elementary bilingual teacher. I'm grateful that Conroe ISD has provided me with this opportunity to prepare for my future. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> hey, Daisy. <clears throat> if you'll have your people call my people when you're ready to Teach will work something out. <laughs> and he will, I promise. <laughs> um, our next speaker wants to be two speakers. They want to present together. Um, we have um, Melanie Nunez and Brianna Green from Oak Ridge High School. Hi. <laughs> um, at first, starting in the STAR program, as she said, I wasn't quite like sure at all really what I was going to do with my life. But then as we started progressing through college visits, etc., cetera, um, I started to realize that there are things that are more important than just working to get by. Like, for example, when we went to the U of H campus, he said, it is a privilege to be here, and I, I still remember that. And honestly, the STAR program has helped us in more than just getting by. It showed us that we actually need a future to excel, and it has helped me develop basically my thoughts of what I want to do with my life. So for example, I want to go into forensic science and then ultimately go to law school, and that's basically I have my my set of plans now due to the STAR program, and I appreciate it greatly. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Moral support is a good thing. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, our last speaker tonight is uh, Philip Dickey from the Woodlands High School. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. So when I first came into the STAR program, I was, you know, we were all offered by our counselors, but when I first came in there, my name was Philip Dickey, and when I first came in, it was in freshman year, and the name didn't really mean anything. It was just a boy entering, you know, his first year of high school with the idea of, 
I want to be a video game designer. I wanted to make video games. Um, when I entered the Star Program, the very first thing I did was do the ropes course, and I made a lot of friends that day. And I met, I managed to meet all my can counselors and understand what you know college was really about. And then you start going to all the campuses, and you realize maybe your dreams aren't exactly what you want to do. And then as you go further in life, you understand that there are other options and the STAR program really helped me understand that going to a smaller school and then bigger school and as life goes on, things change and that's, that's okay. So the freshman boy, Philip Dickey, came in with a dream, but the freshman man, Philip Dickey, is leaving with a mission. And I thank the STAR program and all of you people who are standing here before us for that wonderful experience that you've all given me. So thank you. Thank you. Now the counselors from the high school will uh, call the students' names for them to come receive a certificate. Students, when we are through, um, you're going to go around this way? Yes. Okay. You're going to line up right here, so call your name. You're going to go around this way. You get to shake everybody's hand. All right. Uh, they're going to get pictures. You can go in the hallway for pictures, and then back to where we started for refreshments. Okay? All right. Thank you. Thank for you. Creek. Thank you. First, we have um, Daisy Cuevas. <laughs> and our next um, star student tonight is Leslie Serafin. <laughs> From Hawk Academic Alternative High School, we have Luis Roman. <laughs> and we also have Dolly Santana Garcia. And if you counselors would stay up here with your kids, that'd be great. From Conroe High School, we have Cheyenne Dearmore. <laughs> Gabriela Martinez. <laughs> and Richard Johnson. Oak Ridge High School, we have Brianna Green attending Los Angeles City College, majoring in music. <laughs> Next, we have Melanie Nunez attending New York City College, majoring in forensic science. Oh. And this young lady isn't with us tonight. Her name is Stephanie Bryant, but she wanted me to let you know how thankful she was for all you do for her. She is in Austin taking her certification test for cosmetology. All right. Representing the Woodlands High School, we have Philip Dickey. So congratulations, you guys. Another round of applause, thank you. Congratulations on what you guys have accomplished, and I know you worked very hard to do those things, and I just had to follow the three best speakers of the night, so I, had a, I needed some moral support right here by me. So uh, thank you guys so much for all your hard work, and we're so proud of you and CISD, so let's give them one more round of applause. <laughs> Thank you. 
You're going to have to swing out that way. <laughs> there we go. Congratulations. Go right down the line. Congratulations. 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 Can you give me another one? Congratulations. 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 Great speech. Congratulations. Great speech. Great speech. Great speech. Great speech. Great speech. Great Hey, you did a great job. Great speech. Thank you for another. I lost it. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed I'm jealous. I want to come with you, bud. Something like that. All right. Congratulations. Good day, Charlie. Good job on your comment. Thank you. Third version. Great way to start. <clears throat> That's a pretty good start, Ms. Sunderman. Thank you for the for that kickoff of this board meeting. Uh, item two B, Dr. Stockton, Special District Reg Recognition, Child Nutrition Ambassador Award, sir. Right. I'd like to invite Robin Hughes, our Director of Child Nutrition, up to introduce our recipients. Good evening, President Sanders, members of the board, and Dr. Stockton. Thank you for allowing me to recognize our employees tonight. We have two recipients, Ms. Betty Wilson. <laughs> and Ms. Erlene Powell. and she's the cafeteria manager at San Jacinto Elementary. She cares a lot about the students and encourages them to eat a nutritious meal every day. And we're very fortunate to have her. Um, we have a lot of kids in this district who don't necessarily get to eat at home. And so school meals are their main staple. And so um, we just do the best that we can to make sure that we can feed as many of them as we can. And um, if you gotta draw a smiley face on it to get them to take it, then you draw a smiley face on it to get them to take it. Thank you. Thank you. And this is Miss Arlene Powell. She's an associate at College Park High School. She has a very positive outlook on life and students enjoy coming through her lunch line to hear her encouraging words and laughter. Uh, she takes a lot of pride in her work and she's an asset to our team. <clears throat> Thank you. Ladies, on behalf of uh, Dr. Oh, 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 oh. Uh, <laughs> on behalf of Dr. Stockton and the Board of Trustees, we'd like to say thank you. You guys are truly the unsung heroes of the district. Um, me, as a, as a parent, I know what great job you guys do, and I try to make sure my kids understand if they're going to be friends with anyone, it's the cafeteria workers. <laughs> I'm sure it's friends with the cafeteria workers, big boys. So thanks a lot. We really appreciate it. We can't say thanks enough. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Robin. Well, we all understand a hungry child can't learn, and uh, we also understand that uh, a child that doesn't show up to school can't learn. So item 2C, 
Special District Recognition Transportation Investment Awards. Mm -hmm. At this time, I'll invite Sam Davila, our Director of Transportation, to the podium to introduce our recipients. Good evening, Mr. Husbands, Dr. Stockton, member of the board. It's it's my pleasure to be here tonight to uh, introduce once again some stars in our department that just continue to shine and. Uh, uh, first of all, I'd like to start with uh, Tina Carpenter. She's from our East County Transportation Center. Tina. Uh, you can tell how dedicated they are. She had to actually drive her bus here right after her rally so she didn't make it. So if y'all got any calls, there is a bus out there. <laughs> Free advertising too, right? We could use the drivers. Uh, next is Kelly Turner from Oak Ridge Center. Kelly uh, did a wonderful job. She was quick on her feet, quick to thought. Uh, actually, a student had had slipped off their seat and fell on their backpack, had some scissors in it. She was quick enough to uh, take them to the hospital and make sure they got the care they, uh, they needed and contacted the transportation center and did everything right and so that the child could uh, get the care that they needed. So we appreciate that. <laughs> uh, next is Harold Smith, AKA Crash. <laughs> You're welcome. You're welcome, Harold. Uh, Harold is from our Willis Transportation Center. Uh, it's a story about a duck, but everything's okay now. So uh, that was several years ago. Um, Harold's a tremendous asset. He always has a smile on his face. Uh, is always motivated and positive. And uh, our Woodland Center is usually our shortest and drivers. So that's a treat to have somebody there that's always positive, always willing to help out and, and jump in on the route. So thanks, Harold. <laughs> And uh, last but not least is uh, Deshaun Williams. Deshaun? Mm -hmm. Deshaun is actually one of our newbies. Uh, he actually came to us. He was part-time, and he decided to go full-time. Um, and then shortly after that, we recognized his talents, and he became one of our trainers. Uh, so uh, Sean is definitely a rising star. So here's our extra mile award for the uh, transportation department. Thank you, Craig. Uh, on, on behalf of the, the Conroe Independent School District Board and, and everybody, we thank you guys so much. Such an important job. Uh, had a challenging this year, probably one of the more challenging years, but uh, yeah, you know, just from personal experience, I still remember. Uh, Mrs. Bellows and Mr. Otis, my, my bus drivers, and what a positive impact they made. And that's really, you know, how kids start their morning sometimes with, like you said, the positive uh, influence every day. Exactly. So we thank y'all so much. Ms. Ferris, uh, do we have anybody signed up to address the board tonight? Yeah. Very good. Okay. Um, this is very good. If no one objects, uh, we're going to move items uh, 9A through L uh, up in the agenda order so that we can get these some of these wonderful educators uh, home at a decent time with their young families, most of them, younger than mine anyway. So, uh, Dr. Stockton, uh, 9A, naming of the Director of Communication, sir. Okay, it's my honor um, to recommend to the board. Uh, before, I, before I do that, I do want to, she's out in the hallway, isn't she, taking pictures right now? Okay, I'll, I'll do that later. Um, it's my honor to recommend Sarah Wood to the board uh, to be our new Director of Communication. 
Um, Sarah is currently our specialist in GT, and um, it's my honor to recommend her to you. I hear a motion. Motion. Second. A motion and a second. Uh, any discussion? All those in favor signify by raising your right hand. All opposed? One, one, one thing. On board field trips, she has to hold my hat. She has to hold your hat. <laughs> You'll have to work that out with her. Right. I think you're you're out of order, Mr. Williams. Uh, <laughs> Congratulations. Here you go. Mr. Husbands, members of the board, and Dr. Stockton, I am honored to be selected to serve as the Director of Communications in Conroe ISD. I want to thank my family, friends, and colleagues for supporting me in all of my endeavors and encouraging me to be the best that I can be each day. And I'm truly humbled by the privilege to be a part of telling this exceptional district story and supporting the mission of our leader, Dr. Stockton. Thank you. Thank you. And before we go to the next item, I would um, I would like to recognize Dr. Meeks. Dr. Meeks has been in our position in that position the last two years and is uh, staying home a child next year. So uh, if you could stand up, we'd like to honor you too. So. <laughs> Well, she's taking good care of Dr. Stockton, but you know, you can imagine this crew up here, you know, having to watch what goes out to the public from us. So anyway, uh, uh, thank you, Dr. Meeks, and uh, welcome, Sarah. Uh, item uh, 9B, Dr. Stockton, naming of the Director of Elementary Education. I am equally honored, and I will be all night uh, on every recommendation <laughs> uh, to, uh, to recommend our a, a new position, Director of Elementary Education. With our growth, we uh, have added a new position, and I'm honored to recommend Shelly Winkler. Shelly currently is a principal of Volvo Intermediate School. Motion. I hear it. Motion. Second. And a second. <clears throat> uh, any discussion? All those in favor signify by raising your right hand. Congratulations. <laughs> I hate to go after the Director of Communications, however, <laughs> um, Mr. Residents, uh, members of the board, and Dr. Stockton, I'd like to thank you for this opportunity to be the new Director of Elementary Education. I told Dr. Stockton several years back when I was Assistant Principal that I wanted to be in a position that had a broader view of the district and to understand the dynamics of each of the feeder zones. And I. I think this fits the bill, so I'm happy, right. yeah. happy with that. Um, on another note, I'd like to thank the board and Dr. Stockton, as well as Dr. Hines and Dr. Gibson and Dr. Knoll. I think they're very committed to growing leadership in this organization, and I think tonight is a true testament of that commitment. So I want to thank you for that. Um, tonight I have a few people with me. All right. Last time I was up here, I forgot to thank my husband, so I'm going to go first with him. <laughs> he, he's my cheerleader, and I appreciate all his support. I have my twins. You would stand, please. All right. <laughs> I have my twins, Ryan and Riley, who are seventh graders at Knox Junior High. With me, Ryan. Those you can stand at Ryan. Okay. And oh, yeah. Riley. Right. And then our little surprise, Brayden. All right. <laughs> And then I also have with me tonight my mother, Cheryl Fox, so I'm surprised that she didn't have a sign and glitter waving in the back. <laughs> and my dad, John Fox, who skipped a very important meeting to be here tonight, so I really appreciate his support. Good deal. Stand up, Mom. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you. And due to that, Dr. Stockton, I think it, that made item 9C uh, um, 
necessary. A naming of the principal of Vogel Intermediate. I'm honored to recommend uh, Tara Vandermark, who is currently our principal at Oak Ridge Elementary, to be the new principal at Vogel Intermediate School. Do I hear a motion? So moved. Second. And a second. All, any discussion? All those in favor, in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those like sign. Congratulations, Tara. <laughs> those two. <laughs> Mr. Husbands, members of the board, Dr. Stockton, uh, I am so honored to take on this position at Vogel Intermediate. I've had the honor of working in the Conroe Feeder, in the Woodlands Feeder, and I've set, settled the last 14 years in the Oak Ridge Feeder, so this is going to be a great new experience for me, working with fifth and sixth graders, and it's definitely going to be a learning experience for all of us. Um, I do want to introduce my husband, Brian Vandermark, my daughter, Lily, and my son, Hunter, who are both Oak Ridge Owls at the moment will <laughs> soon make their way to Vocal Intermediate. So thank you so much. And the dominoes continue to fall. No, item, item number 9D, naming of the principal of Oak Ridge Elementary. Once you start this, you can't stop. I'm honored to make this recommendation to the board. Um, I'd like to recommend to replace Ms. Vandermark, uh, Tammy Eldridge, who's currently the assistant principal at Oak Ridge Elementary School. And do I hear a motion? Motion. Second. And a second. Any discussion? All those in favor, please raise your right hand. Bose like sign. Congratulations, Tim. Mr. Husbands, school board members, and Dr. Stockton, it is my honor to accept this position as the principal at Oak Ridge Elementary. I've served for 18 years in Conroe. In the last 11, I have been privileged to work at Oak Ridge Elementary as assistant principal, so I'm very excited to give back to the school or continue to give to the school um, that where I have been working, investing my time. Um, I'd like to introduce to you my husband, Jeff Eldridge, <laughs> <laughs> which you most of you know, <laughs> my son, Joshua Eldridge, and my other son, Jacob Eldridge. And I'd like to introduce you to probably my biggest cheerleaders, my parents in the back, Jeff and Lynette Bush. Oh, no. And my sister, Jeppy Lynn Mathis. Oh. Item 9E, Dr. Stockton, uh, naming a director of assessment and evaluation. This is a little like an exercise class, as much as you're getting up and down. Um, I am I'm honored, again, to uh, recommend uh, for the next position, a position of director of assessment and evaluation, our current principal at Tuff Elementary School, Julie English. Motion. I have a motion. Motion. Second. And a second. Uh, all those in favor? Signify by raising your right hand. Take this other. Congratulations. Mr. Husbands, members of the board, and Dr. Stockton, I am very honored that you've selected me for director of assessment and evaluation. I'm looking forward to stepping into this new role and working to assure the accountability for our district. I am always very excited and I love to brag that I graduated from Conroe ISD and just from Conroe High School right across the street. My husband and I raised all three of our children in Conroe. They graduated from the Woodlands High School. I'm so proud to be a part of a district dedicated to putting kids first in everything they do. 
When we say all means all, we truly mean it. I am honored to have been a principal at Colson Taft for the past seven years, and I continue to be committed to doing the work for our kids, our community, and our schools. I would like to uh, recommend, uh, not recommend, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to introduce my husband, <laughs> David English. He's been my supporter for 35 years. Awesome. And my son, Michael, I didn't think he'd be able to make it tonight, but he just drove in from Louisiana, so All there's right. Michael. <laughs> just got his first job today. And my mother and dad, uh, Philip and Kathy Keitel. All right. Thank you again. Brings us to item 9F, uh, naming of the principal of Tuff Elementary. Dr. All right, it's uh, continuing the tradition. It's my honor uh, to recommend uh, Sean Cresswell, who's currently assistant principal at Mitchell Intermediate School for the principalship of Tuff Elementary School. And do I have a motion? Motion. And a second? second. Uh, any discussion? All those in favor, signify by raising your right hand. Congratulations, Sean. <laughs> Mr. Husband's Board of Trustees and Dr. Stockton, I am incredibly honored to be chosen the principal of Colson Tuff Elementary School. I have treasured every position that I've had the past 14 years in our amazing school district. Today, I have with me my very supportive husband, Steve Cresswell. All right. Our oldest son, Billy, former CISD graduate, of course. He'll be, he'll be graduating from A&M in August. Right. Um, our daughter, Sarah, could not be here with us this evening. She has her award ceremony shortly. Our daughter, Grace, who's in third grade, and our son, Jack, who's in first grade. <laughs> but most importantly, I wouldn't be able to be standing here in front of you today if it wasn't for a very special person who's with me tonight, Mrs. Paula Klopeski. She believed in me nine years ago, a first grade teacher at elementary school at Buckaloo, that I would be a great assistant principal for her at Mitchell Intermediate. I have loved every minute of my nine years of being a Mitchell Mustang, and I've been so blessed to learn from this incredible leader. I look forward to being the principal at Colson Tough for many, many years and being part of the CISD family where I dearly love. Thank you so much for this opportunity and for believing in me. <laughs> Uh, second, uh, 9G, naming of the principal of Wilkerson Intermediate. I'm excited to, to recommend um, J.J. Dahl, who's currently the principal of Kaufman Elementary School, to be the new principal of Wilkerson Intermediate School. And do I have a motion? Motion. And a second? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor of signify by raising your right hand. Congratulations, Ms. Dahl. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Husband's board and Dr. Stockton. I am, again, humbled and honored to stand before you. I've had um, the amazing opportunity to lead some schools at Conroe ISD, first at Hauser Elementary, then Kaufman. Uh, change is an opportunity for growth, and I embrace that, and I'm looking forward to continuing to see the legacy that is CISD as it grows and moves forward and and leads the charge of what, what school should be. And so it's my honor to be a part of that. Uh, and thank you for your leadership in making that happen for us. Um, I would like to thank um, 
my lovely daughter for coming here with me tonight, Sydney Daw. When, when we moved to CISD, Sydney turned one in the fall when I was a teacher at Mitchell Intermediate. And tonight she drove me here and is a College Park High School student. So uh, awesome. I, I hope, hope to be up here maybe for some other reason when she's graduating from that maroon school she turned on me. So anyway, thank you for being here. Her dad, Joe Dahl, um, is at the Knox Awards tonight. So certainly a great supporter of mine and would be here if he could. Thank you so much. Dr. Stockton, uh, item number 9H, naming of the principal of Kaufman Elementary School. All right, another next uh, exciting recommendation. Um, I am proud to recommend Tina Oliver, who's currently an assistant principal at Durchin Elementary School for the position of principal at Kaufman Elementary School. And do I have a motion? Motion. Second. Second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Or raising your hand, excuse me. Like Congratulations. <laughs> Mr. Husbands, members of the board, and Dr. Stockton, thank you for this opportunity to serve Conroe ISD as the principal of Kaufman Elementary. I am truly honored to get to know the staff at Kaufman Elementary um, and become a part of the Kaufman Elementary family. I would like to take this moment to thank Alicia Reeves, who is my current principal. I want to thank her for her leadership, her guidance, and her support as I've been her assistant principal for the last four years at Derrickton. I would also like to thank my husband, Chris. He is here with me this evening. My daughters, Meg and Bailey, are unable to be here because my daughter Bailey's high school one-act play is competing in the state competition in Austin this evening, and Meg is there to support her. And I have not told them this exciting news yet, so I am very excited to make that phone call at the conclusion of the meeting this evening. I want to thank you again for this incredible opportunity. Thank you. Dr. Stockton, um, item 9I, uh, naming of the principal of Bosman Intermediate. Okay, our next uh, uh, recommendation is for the principal <clears throat> position of Bosman Intermediate School. I'm, I'm very proud to recommend Bethany Medford, who's currently an assistant principal running elementary school. And do I have a motion? So moved. And a second? Second. Thank you. Uh, any discussion? All those in favor signify by raising your right hand. Congratulations, Mrs. Medford. Husbands, board, Dr. Stockton, thank you for the opportunity to serve with the students, faculty, and staff at Bosman Intermediate. I'm, I'm greatly looking forward to the opportunity to, to ensure success for all students. Um, I'd like to thank a few people. Um, Dr. Knoll encouraged me, I won't share how many times, to go back to school. Um, he was persistent, and for that, I'm grateful, so thank you. And to Tracy, I couldn't have asked for a better mentor for the last three years to learn from, so I appreciate everything you've done. And I brought my fan club. That's what I'll right. have, I think. Um, my husband, Jeff, who understands why I love so much what I do, and our twins, um, Kennedy and Caden. Thank you.
Item 9J, Dr. Stockton, naming of the principal at Collins Intermediate School. I am excited to recommend Shelly LeBlanc. Uh, Shelly is currently associate principal at the Woodlands College Park High School um, for the position of principal at Collins Intermediate School. Motion. Have a motion. Go ahead. Second. Second. All those favor signify by raising your right hand. Congratulations, Shelly. Mr. Husbands, members of the board, and Dr. Stockton, it is my honor to accept this position to serve the students, the parents, and the teachers at Collins Intermediate in Conroe ISD. There is no greater mission and responsibility than to carry forward our mission and focus and for our great district that every child should feel valued and that our goal is to help all students succeed. In my 21 years of service in CISD, I've worked with so many friends and colleagues that have played a part in shaping me as a leader. I will never be able to show my tremendous appreciation for sharing their knowledge, their support, their prayers, their love, and their talents. Tonight, I have a few members of my family to share in my joy, and I'd like to introduce those. First of all, my rock and foundation, my husband, Paul LeBlanc. My son, Zachary, who will be a kindergartner at David, and my best friend and sister, Sarah Laverne. I'd be remiss not to say that my daughter, who will be a freshman at College Park, is not with us tonight. She is fulfilling her obligation of playing trumpet in the Knox Wind Ensemble at the awards ceremony, and my parents, who are not able to join me as well. So thank you so much for this tremendous honor. <laughs> Awesome. Great job. Dr. Stockton, uh, item 9K, naming of the principal of York Junior High. Okay, the, the uh, next recommendation gets the award for the furthest distance traveled to be here tonight. He flew in from Virginia for the meeting. Um, I'm, I'm very pleased to recommend you to you, James Caker, as the new principal of York Junior High School. And do I have a motion? Motion. Second. Second. Uh, any discussion? All those in favor signify by raising your right hand. Thank you, Mr. Caker. Congratulations. <laughs> uh, Mr. Husbands, uh, members of the board, Dr. Stockton, uh, it's truly an honor to be here tonight uh, to be uh, appointed to this position. I am absolutely looking forward to it. And I must say, you run a very nice board meeting. Uh, the Southern hospitality is uh, very refreshing. Uh, coming from Virginia, uh, it was a long distance traveled. And uh, I don't have my family here with me tonight, but I do look forward to introducing them to you uh, in the future. My wife, Marie, uh, is with ExxonMobil and hence our relocation to the Woodlands area. We're very excited about that and looking forward to being part of the Conroe school system. And I'm excited about going to York Junior High and working with that staff and community to lead that school uh, like I see leadership happening in Conroe ISD. Uh, I'm very grateful to people uh, in your leadership team, Dr. Hines, Dr. Nall, uh, Dr. Gibson for reaching out and supporting me through this process. I know it's a, a bit of a chance when you hire an outsider, but I have two very good friends here with me tonight that know me well, uh, Ron and Kay Galindo, and they are mentors and colleagues of mine over many years, and I'm very grateful for their support and leadership, and uh, am uh, very honored to be uh, recognized to serve you and the school system now and into the future. Welcome to CISD, Thank you, sir. sir. Welcome, 
Dr. Stockton, item 9L, naming of the Director of Special Education. Last but not least, someone I'm equally honored to recommend um, to you as our new Director of Special Education, uh, coming in from Spring Branch, so she probably had the longest drive tonight, uh, and uh, that is Teresa Cannon. Well, do I have a motion? Motion. And a second? Second. Thank you. Uh, any discussion? All right. Hearing none, all those in favor signify by raising your right hand. And congratulations to you, ma'am. Thank you for being here. Members of the board, Dr. Stockton, um, I am so excited to be here. And I just thank you for the opportunity. I can't wait to become a member of the Conroe ISD community. Um, I would like to introduce you to my husband, who's kind of behind the pole up there. Um, and he, <laughs> thank you. And um, as a, the gentleman ahead of me said, the, the Southern hospitality, I don't think that's a given. I think that's something that seems to be special here in Conroe. I've been treated um, and, and been welcomed since the time I set foot here. And one of the reasons that I chose to come and be a part of this district, and I feel really good about that, and I appreciate Dr. Hines and all the time he spent with me, helping me um, figure out what I need to do and, and make sure that we're all in the right place. So um, I appreciate that, and thank you again for the opportunity. Thank you. <laughs> All right. We are not in the business of running anybody off from the business of CISD. We're very interested that you're here, but this is an excellent time if any of you wish to depart this scene. Run, and run. we do congratulate each of you. Uh, we, we as a board know how um, how good Dr. Stockton is at, at his picks for principals and uh, administrative positions. And so we are honored to that you are here, that you are either accepting a new position in CISD or that you are new to our family, and we do welcome you. Again, a big hand for everybody. <laughs> that was like dominoes. Yeah. Hey, how are you? Great to see you, man. Great to see you. How's things going? Great to see you. I'm going to run out to the
All right. Uh, Let's get uh, Good yeah, people. Uh, we just uh, keep on payroll. And needed a short intermission. That's all. We weren't really adjourned. But all right. Um, that brings us to item uh, 3A through G, our consent agenda. You've had this agenda for a number of days. Does anybody have an item that they need to be uh, need to have removed for discussion? If not, uh, I would entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda. Motion. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any, uh, all those in favor signify by raising your right hand. And thank you very much. Item 4A, Dr. Stockton, consider uh, approval of GPA exemption. I'll ask Dr. Null to come and introduce that item, please. Good evening, Dr. Stockton, Mr. Husbands, members of the board. Uh, it's my pleasure to be here tonight to uh, present to you for your approval of the GPA exemption. Conroe ISD strives to encourage students to pursue their areas of special talents and interests to enrich their academic experiences and achievements. In that spirit, Conroe ISD high school administrators and counselors have collaborated to draft the proposed GPA exemption to be in place for the class of 2017 and beyond. The GPA exemption will allow students to exempt up to two credits during their high school career thereby excluding those credits from calculation and their grade point average. The list of approved courses for exemption includes programs such as band, drill team, theater, choir, and athletics. We believe this will foster continued and increased involvement in extracurricular programs and ensure that all of our students have access to a well-rounded education. At this time, we ask that you would consider GPA exemption for approval. Very well, do I hear a motion? So moved. Second. And a second, uh, any discussion? I have a question. Yeah, um, so for the students who aren't, am I understanding this right? They're excluded from, yeah, okay. So those students who are in those programs, and let's say they, they choose to get out or they're disruptive, is it gonna be any, um, usually you know, grades are kind of one of those things teachers use to keep students motivated. And so what do you do? Do we, is that even a discussion that's been had at this point about students? Yeah. Uh, students would, would opt into this program, first okay. of all, and the there are parameters to allow them to get in. So typically, uh, on, on most of these courses, it's the third and fourth course, and right. they would have to have successfully completed the first and second course uh, in order for, for them to even have this option in the third course. Mm -hmm. uh, although the grades won't be calculated in their GPA, the numerical grade will still appear on the transcript. Okay. So in that sense, that motivation would still be there for a student. Thank you. So they'll get a, they'll get a numerical grade? Or? They, they will on their transcript. In addition to that, all of the you know, no pass, no play rules would still apply to a course even if they had chosen to exempt it. So there's there's plenty of motivation there to continue to do, to do well. So we're going to grade them, but it won't count toward the GPA. Correct. Oh, I thought you were going to give them like a smiley face. <laughs> <laughs> no check marks or gold no. stars or any of that. Yes, sir, no. I was. We couldn't print that up. Couldn't get that to print the transcripts. Scratching smells, That's what it is. Is there a leak? Is, why is PE excluded? What is there some legal reason why it can't be included in this? The, the list of courses that were included, are, for the most part, are programs that students would be a part of and compete and okay. continue to have after school requirements that go along with their mm -hmm. uh, as a co-curricular type program. Very good. Mm -hmm. One more question. I, I see where it's ninth grade in the fall of 2013 or later. Is that just a matter of uh, it'll take that long to kind of get it going or? 
we considered you know starting it maybe with the current sophomores as they become juniors next year however because we didn't have this ready to present to you in time students that are current sophomores may have already made decisions um, for their junior and senior year as far as programs that they've chosen to stay in or move out of that they've they possibly could have made a different decision had this been in place so we felt like the most fair way so that all students would know this was in place for them as they made decisions on their four-year plan would be to start it with the current freshmen next year they'll be sophomores and they'll know this is in place before they make their selections for their junior year good point you guys think of everything yeah it's great very good well thought out well, i did have one more art i just don't get art i mean why is it included in there we, i understand it we do have our out. advanced art courses and they do compete okay. on the uil level and uh, programs called base where they do compete okay now some of our upper level art courses become ap level and so they wouldn't fit this category the students would in that situation would want those gpas because they're advanced yeah. they're weighted yeah. uh, as ap credit great thank you dr no for sure any other questions if not uh all those in favor of signify by raising your right hand and it's that uh, it passes and thank you thank you thank you sir <clears throat> Uh, Dr. Stockton, item 5A, uh, mask, uh, campus mascot of uh, information only item for Charlie L. Patterson Elementary School and Jean E. Stewart Elementary School. As per board, I, board policy, we will in, uh, introduce the item tonight and then ask you next month to approve it. So I'll ask uh, Dr. Kathy Gibson to present um, the mascot information. Good evening, Mr. Husband, board members, and Dr. Stockton. Uh, Mr. Gilberto Lozano, Principal of Patterson, and Mrs. Carrie Fitzpatrick, the Principal of Stewart, Stewart Elementary, implemented a mascot selection process. The mascot selection process included solicitation of nominations from students and families for school mascot names. Information consisting of the top nominations was provided for students and families to identify their favorite mascot. The following nominations for the campus mascot are identified below. And I'd also like to point out, I think uh, Charlie Patterson's son is here, so you're, we're unveiling this for the first time. The Patterson Elementary Pumas and the awesome. Stewart Elementary Mustangs. And we'll be back to uh, seek your approval in June. Now, we usually get a kind of a couple of those to look at. I mean, for Snyder, we got two. It was like Snyder Stallions or Scholars. This time around, you don't want us to mess it up, so you kind of. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's what it, just tell us. It's all good. We, we respect that. We spent a little too long discussing it last time, so okay, they just uh, that the choices. I, I, I like the choices, so I mean, I'm. <laughs> but I did want to point that out. We noticed that, you know. Well, so, I yeah. think um, you know, I think that, uh, hey, that they're very, it. very well done, and well. Uh, and it's exciting for 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 both of those namesakes as well as uh, uh, those uh, students and, and campuses to be involved in that decision. Thank and you. I, I support job. it wholeheartedly. Great. Any Great other job. questions of this, Dr. Gibson? Well, Very good. Thank you. By, by the way, we did we did bet it with the uh, namesakes. Okay. <laughs> so so your, your dad already knows about it. <laughs> good deal. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Gibson, uh, Dr. Stockton. Uh, item 5B, uh, upgrade front door security at multiple schools. I'll ask uh, Easy Foster, our director of plan construction, to come up to present the next four items. Mr. Husbands, Dr. Stockton, members of the board, it is my pleasure to bring forward tonight for your approval a proposal for access control upgrades at multiple campuses. This proposal is presented by a sole source vendor their custom intercom integration software utilized um, and developed by this vendor allows the ability to unlock, communicate, and view <coughs> video through our existing Cisco phone systems. The project will provide cameras, front door intercom, and electronic hardware to provide controlled access at 24 campus locations. The work is primarily at elementary and intermediate campuses, but also includes work at Knox Junior High School. The system has been piloted at five campuses, elementary and junior high, and has been found to interact well with the technology we already have in place. The cost for this project is $274,000 with funding allotted in the general fund. At this time, I ask for your approval. 
And do I have a motion? Motion. And a second? Second. Thank you. Any discussion? I would just like to say that the first time the board was locked out at Runyon, it, it worked very yeah, it well. Yeah, it worked. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it just, it seems to, uh, it worked. I, th I think it's the appropriate level, especially for the elementary schools. And um, and I thank y'all for your wisdom. I know y'all have done a lot of research into that uh, uh, school safety committees and so on and so forth. And uh, Chief and, and Dan and Don and everybody's been involved in that. But, uh, and everybody. Oh, sorry, didn't mean to leave anybody out, but thank you for your efforts. I have a uh, motion and a second. Uh, any further discussion? All those in favor signify by raising your right hand. All opposed, like sign. Thank you very much. Item uh, 5C, Burnham Woods uh, Drive Improvements at School Entrance. Dr. Stockton. Semester. This time I'd like to present for approval a financial reimbursement for the Burnham Woods Drive Improvements at Burnham Woods Elementary. The developer, uh, Imperial Oaks Development Corporation is undertaking a project to connect Burnham Woods Drive from our location at Burnham Woods Elementary south across the creek to Elon Boulevard. The project has been designed, bid, and will be constructed by the developer. Conroe ISD has participated in the design planning of the area directly adjacent to Burnham Woods Elementary. The developer has agreed to some design features in the roadway that will benefit the traffic flow along Burnham Woods Drive and improve access to our school. The work we're talking about tonight was requested specifically by us, Conroe Independent School District, okay. and uh, involves widening the roadway to allow dedicated turning lanes into, uh, into Burnham Woods Elementary from both the north and the southern, southern direction. The design and pricing of the work requested by us has been reviewed by CISD, my department, uh, has been reviewed by our design consultants and our construction uh, manager uh, that does roadway and paving. We found the, the pricing to be in line and the scope to be in line with what we, we had planned. This, this proposal, as I mentioned before, is for a financial reimbursement to the developer for the work requested by Conroe ISD in the amount of $336,169.28 and has been uh, allowed for in the 2008 bond fund. Motion. I have a motion. Do I hear a second? Second. Thank you. Um, any discussion? Mr. Foster, let me just ask, uh, do you know who the contractor is? Uh, I am not aware of that name. I, I wasn't aware of the, I wasn't at the bid for the developer. I just reviewed the pricing he received and went, went through their scope items with them. Okay. Uh, but that is a, would be a county road, is that correct? So, I mean, it's got to be built to their specs. I mean, it's not something that somebody can do, you know. Haphazardly. Yeah, I mean, that is, not that, that the developer wants to do that, but I mean, I, there's a there's a higher governing force here in in, in play. Correct. There is very there good is, uh, oversight by the, the county district. Thank you very much. Any other questions? All those in favor, signify by raising your right hand. Unanimous. Uh, Dr. Stockton, item uh, 5D, GMP for Elementary and uh, Intermediate Kiln Project. Ms. Foster. <clears throat> this time I'm bringing forward for your approval a, a guaranteed maximum price <coughs> for a project we call the elementary and intermediate kiln project. The kilns at the elementary and intermediate level have been surveyed by our maintenance department, uh, by planning construction, and our design consultant, DBR. The work was advertised for bids to be received by our construction manager, Brooke Stone, after review of all the proposals, a GMP of $336,208 is being presented. The kiln project will bring all existing intermediate and K through six campuses into full compliance with CISD kiln operating guidelines, along with the various jurisdictional authorities that we have to work under here in Conroe ISD. Elementary kiln facilities that are not currently being utilized will be removed from service, and the remaining elementary kiln facilities will be modified to support safer operation in accordance with our district kiln operating guidelines. The purpose of the project is to provide a safe safety in use and a maintainable kiln facility <coughs> in our district. Funding is allotted for in the general fund, and at this time I ask for your approval to proceed. How many? Thank you, Ms. Foster. I have, I'm sorry, I have a motion. No, I had a question, but okay. I'll, I'll wait till we motion for motion. Motion. Do I hear a second? Second. second. Question, sir? How many kilns is this? How many kilns are we dealing with? Mm -hmm. We will be uh, 
upgrading a, a complete and full upgrade to 10 kilns. Uh, mind you that we upgraded the M Mitchell Intermediate Kiln Facility over spring break separately. We are doing minor upgrades to 14 kilns at 14 elementary campuses where it involves just some minor electrical changes to make the operation safer, but not necessarily come into full compliance. We developed a, a guideline and a compliance measure that will cover all of the jurisdictions we work for. Uh, the be the city of Conroe, the city of Oak Ridge, the, the Wilderness Township, Montgomery County, and then anticipating at some point in the future possibly dealing with Harris County. Uh, across those jurisdictions, we have several different versions of the power code we're dealing with, so we tried to create a guideline that would meet the most stringent of those requirements. The 14 that we're do doing minimal upgrades for don't fall into the category of needing to be the most strict, uh, meet the most strict requirements to remain safe in operation. But at the same time, we work with uh, curriculum and instruction because the, the TEKS, I believe they are, doesn't require a kiln to operate in the elementary level. So where it was low-hanging fruit, we're going to upgrade them to make them maintainable by our, our maintenance department. Where they had a structural noncompliance, there's 10 lo or 11 locations where there was a major issue with the building that would pre prevent us from bringing it into full 100% compliance at the elementary level. So we're removing 11 doing a full upgrade to 10, which are the intermediate and K through six campuses, and then 14 elementary campuses are being brought into safer operation. Thank you, sir. Any other questions? I, I would just make a statement that uh, I, I would like to make sure that the administration acknowledges uh, uh, this operation and these guidelines and this work to their insurance carrier, because it is, it is a very responsible thing to do, and it can keep that Four cent rate on that property at four cents and not going to five, you know, whatever. So it is a wise thing to, to report, just like a new roof, you know, if you will, but even more important, maybe. So I would like to uh, recommend that. And uh, since I have a uh, motion and a second, any further discussion? All those in favor signify by raising your right hand. All opposed, like yeah. sign. And that passes. <coughs> uh, item 5E, Dr. Stockton. Well, I'm update. <coughs> This time I'd like to present an update to the major projects under construction funded with the 2008 bond referendum funds. Starting with Charlie L. Patterson Elementary School. Uh, this building is substantially complete. So we can, uh, we can fill it with our furniture and fixtures. Our purchasing department, I believe, is scheduled to begin delivering admin furniture the last week of this month, first week of June. Um, so next month I don't anticipate having to give you an update for this building. Uh, you'll notice the dirt in the front uh, front of the foreground. That is, the, uh, the landscape is currently underway. It was recently approved by the city of Conroe, uh, but by, the, by this time next month it will be complete. As you can see, the inside of the building is clean, as you would expect a building that is uh, complete, substantially complete, would be. Right. At Jeannie Stewart Elementary School, again, this building is substantially complete. Uh, again, purchasing will begin delivering our uh, admin furniture uh, the last week of this month. Um, so again, just like with Patterson, I don't anticipate having to update you on this project next month. Knox Junior High. There you go. Yeah. This project is uh, proceeding yeah. as we have planned. Uh, we are entering phase seven of a 12-phase project. When do y'all uh, paint the van? Yeah. Exactly. When are we going to paint the van? <laughs> change something there huh? <laughs> <laughs> well if, if you've been driving around uh, around this area you've noticed some of the exterior changes on this building the uh, the re-roof of the building is currently under progress a lot of the exterior metal work is being done as we as we speak um, so the the interior work uh, the transition of students and the portables back into their classrooms has been flowing as we planned it is on schedule and proceeding exactly as we have had it outlined on the schedule there we go. Uh, it is scheduled to be complete and so we can remove ourselves from that building prior to school starting in August. That is our 2008 bond referendum update. Thank you, sir. Mr. Eve, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Foster, for your hard work. You made it look easy. <laughs> Great job. All right. Uh, we're not in need of an executive session tonight, if I'm, I understand correctly. No, we're not. Okay. And uh, I'm sorry, item um, uh, 6A, uh, financial reports. Uh, Mr. Okay. Rice, if you'll come present. I can't count. 
ready to be done. Good evening, Mr. Husbands, members of the board, Dr. Stockton. Here to present the uh, financial statements for the month of April. These statements will include our general fund at service, child nutrition, and self funded insurance. Uh, the first statement we look at is our balance sheet. Balance sheet shows our assets, liabilities, and fund balance for the district. Always like to look at our cash and investments. Uh, if we look in the general fund, you will notice we have another line item there U.S. Treasury notes. We have begun our purchase of longer term uh, investments. And uh, we started with 14 million. We have four uh, four items at that, <coughs> at that level. We'll go at, we'll go into them in more detail when we get to the investment mm -hmm. section. Next uh, statement is our income statement it shows our revenues and expenditures for the district. Always can look at our uh, local revenues. Show the uh, largest uh, income is in property taxes for the general fund and debt service. Food service is from food sales. And self-funded is from premium contributions. <coughs> Next uh, statement is our projected uh, fund balance that has not changed since last month. That has not changed in our debt service, so shown a slight decrease. A uh, slight decrease in child nutrition that has not changed. Happy to once again report with our self-funded insurance. Uh, once again in April, uh, revenues. Higher than our expenses by about uh, sixteen thousand dollars for the year. We're about five uh, five hundred thousand to the good. So good, good. good report in, uh, in self funded insurance uh, participation in our wellness centers. Uh, as you can see, that is increasing each month, especially at our Conroe mm -hmm. facility. Now they've opened it up uh, completely for the week. Um, five hundred ninety two for the month, averaging uh, about eighty nine at the Conroe Center and five hundred at the Oak Ridge Center. Uh, bond transition plan. We currently spent uh, roughly 49 million of our 109 million dollar bond transition plan, estimating about 55.6 million dollars to complete those projects, leaving us with a total projected forecast of 104 and a half million, leaving us with a little contingency of about 4.4 million in the program. Of our 527 million dollar bond referendum, we still have about 40 million of that to sell. Investments, as I mentioned earlier. At the end of March, we had $371 million invested. Uh, the par value at the end of April, $340 million. Uh, WAM and pulls in the Capital One is one day. Uh, Capital One, though, is at 20, 25 basis points, which if you look out there on the curve, it takes a year and a half to get to 25 basis points. So uh, the pulls are about 14 basis points, so they're, they're still pretty competitive. Our U.S. Treasury notes, the WAM on those are 678 days, but the weighted average maturity of the total portfolio is 29 days since that is just 14 million. We're going to do about, about $30 million right now going out between a year and a half and three years. Between two years and three years, you can really get a good little tick in rate, so, so we're excited about that. And the yield to maturity of our portfolio is currently 0.1778. Our benchmark, the 90-day T-bill, 0.015. What was the delta between this month and last month on that maturity of the portfolio, the yield? Uh, it's about one and a half basis point right now. Uh -huh. you'll, you'll, you'll see it uptick next month as we purchase further. Okay. And that's due to the treasury notes? Yes. And the capital one, right? And the capital one. And the capital, capital one, yeah. Yeah, yeah those two. And, and then as we, you know, in the pools is where we, you know, we'll, we're actually spending those down first. So as that 14 basis points get less, it'll... It'll make that yield increase more because less will be coming out of the 14 basis. Mm -hmm. And of course, all right, new money. New money. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Good job, Mr. Rice. Thank you, Mr. Rice. All right, Dr. Stockton. Um, item 10A, uh, uh, again, uh, it will accept for review uh, uh, TASB local policies, Dr. Stockton. Uh, Mrs. Gladys. Updates. Excuse me, Ms. Gladys. Gladys. Sorry. I That's apologize. Quite all right, Mr. Husbands. I know you forget about me way down here at the end and the podium. You all received quite a thick packet of policies, update 99 and then three additional ones. Uh, for you to review and consider this month before we ask you to adopt the local policies that are within that update, they're not very exciting. Um, the local policies that we're submitting separate and apart are the ones that are probably of most interest to you. I would like to point out CV. We are asking that you increase the amount of approval for uh, change orders from twenty-five dollars to 
We are also asking that you limit the number of days um, that we can set up sick leave pools for employees. Those are donated days by employees for folks who've exhausted all of their leave. And other employees can donate their uh, leave to them to a cap it at 30 <coughs> days. Um, and then finally in uh, DHE, which is not very exciting, it's our drug and alcohol testing policy. We're just cleaning up some things and um, pointing them to procedures for the meat of the uh, how the policy or how that program will be carried out. What's the max amount of days now? For sick leave pool, it's unlimited. And so we've had people with, you know, nearly 200 days, I think, have been donated before, which makes it very hard. You know, we can't fill a position. We can't, the person may never be coming back. We may know. And it's very uh, burdensome for uh, the campuses. And I'm pretty sure they use them all too, don't they? It's, so, I mean, some of them are very sad situations. I mean, the employee may not last as long as the days that are done. I mean, it, it, it's, a, it's a balancing act between taking care of our employees and doing what's best for our yeah. kids. It's really... Um, so if I understand correctly, the, the policy change will be from unlimited to a total of a cap of 30 days. 30 days. You know, I remember... If, In addition to their own days. Correct. Correct. So, yes. And, you know, and the, 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 one of the main concerns we have is there's a disparity oftentimes in what people might receive as a donation. Someone who's well-known and popular might receive yeah. many days donated, whereas the new ploy that doesn't know anyone or perhaps is from a small department may not receive any or very few donated days. And so it's, you know, attempting to bring it kind of into conformity and to limit the impact it has on our, our campuses and departments. Yeah, I agree. Any other questions of Scholastic? Entertain a motion we'll to adjourn. Be back next month for approval. Or, Thank you. Or approval. Entertain a motion for adjourn. Motion. I'll move. Second. You can get a second. Thank you. Don't leave. 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 Don't le